I was working in a fairly narrow area uh, of uh, telecommunications, a rather important one for wireless. But uh, in fact, uh, the uh, algorithm uh, really uh, applies to a very broad uh, set of, uh, of problems in, in physics and in life. Uh, sometimes said that uh, life is a random walk. Well, a random walk is one example that's a random walk could be a drunkard walking the streets of Manhattan, for example, although in physics it means more like atoms and molecules uh, going around in a disturbed uh, manner. And uh, uh, that is an example of what's called a Markov process. And a Markov process or a Markov sequence is something where what happens next depends just on what state you were in just before it happened. And it so happens that there's a lot of uh, cases where that applies. And in, uh, as I said, in the physical world and even in the social sciences. Uh, in the uh, area that I was working in, it was something called uh, error correction or error control for minimizing the, uh, the deleterious effects of uh, uh, noise or of, of, of fading or of uh, interference on uh, wireless communications. And um, I started working on it really way back in the space age. I started uh, 50 years ago, right after they launched Sputnik. I was working on something called Explorer 1 at JPL. And I got very interested in the telemetry and how you sent back uh, uh, messages about the health of the spacecraft. And that, of course, then we went from there to satellite communications. and and broadband and direct broadcast satellite to the home, and then ultimately the cellular phone. And it applies in all those places, as well as others. But what I consider to be really exciting is that over half the world's population is now able to communicate with, the other, with uh, uh, as many people. Uh, and uh, before we had cell phones, before we had uh, mobility, uh, only about 10%. We had about 600 million phone lines in the world uh, in the year 2000, and that was the year that uh, wireless overtook wired telephony. And today there's close to three billion uh, cellular phones. Uh, so that's exciting, and of course that's true uh, for uh, uh, the professional, for the businessman, for uh, most people in the, in the uh, uh, developed world. Uh, we are now able to use it in our professions. Right? Practically everyone has a cell phone and practically everyone is messaging or uh, uh, talking to his or her colleagues or uh, customers or clients. Uh, true that we're now entering a, an era where it may well uh, be that uh, the voice uh, communications, which has already spread throughout the world, will now be able to do multimedia, uh, television, uh, uh, certainly being able to uh, make reservations in a restaurant and on and on and position location, all of these, very, very valuable. I don't think it's going to happen quite as rapidly as voice spread because there's a certain social uh, connectivity that's important. But yes, I think uh, we're into the third generation of uh, uh, wireless telephony and quite possibly uh, uh, in my lifetime there'll be a fourth. <laughs> And if I live long enough, there will even be a fifth. <laughs> which phone do you use? Uh, I use a CDMA phone, which has a Qualcomm chip in it, which I helped uh, develop. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I'm uh, pretty uh, open. And the third generation is almost all uh, CDMA anyhow.